Mr. Couch, my recollection is you were at about the two minute mark, so I'll just put you back in two minutes if you want to. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll be from there. I'll be three here pretty soon. Okay. Uh, we'll recap uh, with uh, we we spent a lot of money on legal fees. Uh, we get about forty hours a week or a month, a month out of that, um, and to my knowledge, there's no business license uh, held by the firm that that, that we pay three hundred thousand dollars to. Um, there are two specific examples I'd like to highlight. Both come from the description of services provided by Sands Anderson and their monthly invoices. Both relate to the dispute that I've had with them around the applicability of the meals tax on the prepackaged multi-serving salad. The first one reads, purchased a meal-sized salad from Panera for comparison with Dreaming Tree Farm Salad, $715 charge on a Sunday. First of all, there is not a Panera bread in King William County. Uh, second of all, the comparison is not similar as these two products are fundamentally different, just like a manufactured pizza from DiGiorno and a custom order pizza from Vinny's are both pizzas. They're not comparable for meals tax purposes. And third, how can a comparison be made by just reviewing one product? Because this law firm never purchased a Dreaming Tree Farm salad. The second example I will highlight tonight is rather than presenting a reasonable justification for the legitimacy of their opinion, if, or focus on collaborating with the taxpayer, it seems two lawyers sat down to prepare, prepare a case to litigate. A $1,667 charge that reads, quote, review with Coast Council which taxpayer arguments to respond to. So instead of a balanced review of the situation, Sands Anderson authored responses for the county, did not address material points such as the manufacturing exclusion from the state definition of restaurant or similar prepackaged multi-serving salad kits sold in King William County. Those details were provided in good faith to resolve this matter, and rather than acknowledge the facts, they felt it more appropriate to go to Panera on a Sunday at the expense of the King William County taxpayer. Was this illegal? No. It does show how, however, what kind of attorney and firm we are dealing with. This is, this is a mode of behavior that does not represent the best interest for King William County or its citizens, and it makes me wonder if this mode of behavior reflects how other county issues are being dealt with. Thank you for your time. Anyone else in the audience? All right. Do we have anybody online that has asked? Us? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment. Next up is item seven, consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I have uh, one correction on one of the minute package. Okay. On. Uh, Go ahead. On page 51 of 450 in our package, there should be a correction. Uh, there was a comment attributed to Delegate Scott Wyatt. It should be attributed to Delegate Rodney Willett, Democrat in RICO. And I'll pass that on to uh, Chris after the meeting that, that uh, satisfies. Okay. Anyone else? So uh, with that change, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Move and second. Discussion. Ms. Branch. Mr. Garvey. Aye. Mr. Warren. Aye. Mr. Greenwood. Aye. Mr. Hodges. Aye. 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 All right. That brings us to uh, presentations, joint venture between King William County and Habitat for Humanity. Ms. Renee Robinson, Executive Director of Hanover Habitat for Humanity. Good evening. Thank you for having me here this evening. Uh, Renee Robinson, Hanover and King William uh, Habitat for Humanity. We are excited to be here to share the news with you all that we are grateful to be expanding to serve um, King William County residents with our programs. I know you had the opportunity to look through some of the materials that I sent over uh, as a pre-read, but I quickly just wanted to cover what our programs are and talk about the partnership I think that we'll be able to have with the county and how we'll be able to work with the community and residents uh, to be able to serve them. So our programs are, you're probably familiar with our home ownership program. We work to get working families and individuals into affordable homes. 
um, as you can imagine, particularly in this market, to be able to buy a home is incredibly expensive. We are typically serving individuals who are earning between 30% and 70% of the area median income. Uh, the majority of our most recent homeowners have been households earning less than 50%. We get them in a house for a mortgage between $650 and $900 a month. So we're working with that gap of folks who are, have a stable enough income that with the right price point and with the right mortgage payment, they can be self-sustaining and, and achieve financial independence with that home, but need a little bit of help because the market rate for a home it would be out of reach for them without a subsidy from our program. Uh, so we will be excited to be able to open our next application uh, window to King William residents and be able to um, accept applicants from the county and hope to be able to start building some affordable homes out in the county and, and partner with the community to be able to do that. Um, you all probably know the, the stats on residents in the county, depending on what uh, year of census data you look at, we're hovering somewhere around 10% of folks in the county that live below poverty level. When you look at folks who are living below 70% of that AMI, it's, there's a pretty good chunk of folks who um, are not able to afford a, a market rate house in the, in the county. So we're excited to partner on some more uh, affordable housing opportunities there. The other program I just want to touch on is our critical repair program that has primarily been focused on seniors, 62 and older, who are typically on an extremely uh, limited income. We will serve individuals who earn up to 50% AMI, but truthfully, we're seeing mostly seniors who are living on Social Security who are earning, in most cases, less than $25,000 annual total income. We focus on repairs that are creating a safety issue in their home or a health issue. So we see a lot of rotting floors, rotting steps outside their home where there's a risk of a fall, or we've been seeing a lot of leaks, which then leads to other issues in the home. So um, one thing, again, when you look at the stats, roughly 16% of the county is households with folks who are age 65 and older. Obviously, that's going to continue to grow. And so we're excited to be able to work with the community there and hopefully be able to access some additional funding there to be able to help help those folks stay safe um, in their home. And then lastly, I'll share, we operate a ReStore, which is uh, uh, the best example I give, out of, give of it is it's a goodwill, but for home and construction supplies. So when you're uh, renovating something in your house or clearing things out, private citizens donate or corporations donate items there. We sell them at a deep discount to the public and all of that money stays local to Hanover and King William and goes straight into the programs that we have. So that restores at Route 301 and Atley Road in Hanover and Mechanicsville. Um, and they're excited to welcome more King William residents there to be able to serve them. Um, just a couple other things. One, I've included in the presentation that you all got the economic impact that we have. We're excited to work with local contractors when we can that are in King William. Sometimes there are skilled labor needs that our volunteers can't do. Using volunteer labor is how we manage our costs and are able to do these things for uh, a discount. Um, so look forward to being able to build relationships there. Uh, and th that money go goes right back into the community. So you can see some of the economic impact that we have, not only from the families that we're serving, but also from the businesses that we're using that are local. So appreciate that. And then really just ask that we be brought to the table on any conversations around affordable housing or keeping folks safe and allowing them to age in place so that we can work together on serving the community. I forgot, I was supposed to introduce Amanda Gunter, who works in our organization as well and is a King William resident and uh, is great to be on the ground here. And then I would be remiss to not acknowledge Ann Mitchell, who worked tirelessly before her retirement to get this partnership with Habitat going. And we're excited to be able to work with her successor, uh, Letitia to be able to partner going forward. So appreciate that. And I've left some of my business cards there so that you guys have my contact information and happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions? Sure. I, can. I would just like to say thank you uh, for everything you're doing. Thank you again, Anna. You're retired now and you're still active. And it's good to see you. Sorry, Trey. Oh, no. I saw it. Oh, uh, formulating one. Who in, within the county will you be, uh, I guess, reporting to or interfacing with? Repeat the first part. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
who within the county administration will you be dealing with primarily? Yeah, so I think primarily it's really going to be with Department of Social Services. So what we find in Hanover now is we have a really tight partnership because obviously DSS ends up being a gateway for a lot of folks who have need and they can help triage and sort of point them to the right service providers. So we've been working closely already with the Department of Social Services to be able to do that. And then with a lot of community groups, so Ruritan clubs, Rotary clubs, Lions clubs, they have been, uh, and then the faith community as well is a huge part of our network. But from a county perspective, open to partnering with others, but DSS is really who our primary contact ends up being. Thank you. Just one question. I know I've been to ReStores in Hampton Roads, but I didn't know we had one in Hanover. We did. Are there hours open back up? Because we are. Hours. We are open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay. So come by and check it out. Our okay. staff office is just at the other end of the shopping center. So I'd be happy to welcome you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much. We're looking forward to working together out here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, now we come to our long list of public hearings. First up is Ms. McGowan, uh, resident administrator uh, for VDOT. Uh, we're gonna be talking about our six year plan. Good evening, you're up. Good evening. Um, I have um, a prepared um, speech here if you'd like for me to start before you open the public hearing to explain what we're doing and go over the numbers. That'd be fine. All right. So good evening. My name is Joyce McGowan of the Virginia Department of Transportation. Um, the Code of Virginia requires that the County Board of Supervisors in conjunction with VDOT formulate a secondary six-year improvement plan and a priority list for the secondary budget. The public hearing this this public hearing is being conducted for the FY22 through FY27 plan, and you will be approving the FY22 budget. Um, that's the actual dollars. The other um, five years are ex expected allocations. The yearly amount budgeted for the plan ranges from $93,418 this year up to $146,362 projected in fiscal year 27 with the plan having a total amount available to spend over the six years of $745,362. Of this amount, $289,506 has been earmarked for unpaved roads and cannot be used on any other type of secondary road. And the remainder is your tell fees that are used to supplement your unpaved road program here in the county. There was no hearing last year because of COVID, so there was legislation that was approved to extend the approved budget of 2019 through last year. So this year you're um, having this public hearing as a requirement because the code says you have to have a hearing every, you can have a hearing every other year if your allocations are less than $100,000. Um, so um, we'll evaluate that again for next year. Currently on the plan, you have unpaved roads in the county that were added to the plan over the last several years. Um, Route 608 Hazelwood is the one that will be paved this year. Um, next year, we have Route 637 White Oak Landing Road, followed by Route 634 Kentucky, 633 Sandy Point, Route 624 Trimmer Shop, 617 Spring Forest, and 627 East St. John's Road, and Route 621 Green Level that will be, um, is projected to be constructed in 2025. Um, there are four other roads that currently have over 50 cars a day in the county. So I don't want um, folks to think if their road wasn't called out that they weren't eligible. It's just there isn't any funding in the program to add any at this time. So each year as you do the plan, we need to look at the funding to see if one, when a road gets completed like Hazelwood this year and hopefully um, White Oak will be in the queue before we get to this hearing next year, you'll be able to say, okay, we can add a couple more roads. So, um, and, I, and if anybody um, has any questions on those and um, contact you, just let me know and I'll be glad to give those to you. Currently on the plan also, we have Route 600, the turn lane that you've heard every year we get ready to do. Um, we actually um, completed some surveying and got um, with traffic engineering to make sure that the signal was going to be sufficient um, without making any upgrades. So that's been vetted and that's okay. And we had to make some drainage changes we weren't aware of 
um, for some other compliance um, <clears throat> specifications that we needed. Um, so we're going to be doing that this year. There will be a small short term duration detour for that over a few days while we're paving in the intersection for the traffic that comes out the side road to eliminate any issues on that. So that's going this year. That's good news. Um, and that should free up some funds. So we'll have some more funds to look at for next year for projects. Um, in your secondary six year plan, there are budget items there for traffic engineering, right of way and general engineering and survey type items. If you get a request for a speed study or a larger study or requests for signs that are outside the scope of maintenance, this little slush fund, as I call it, is there for you to be able to undertake some of those measures. There's about $30,000 across all three, and I think that's sufficient. I don't think you should add any more. That should carry you through. That's been there for a couple of years. Um, and finally, um, with this, I would recommend that the board approve the plan um, as it is. Um, we have um, accommodated all of the roads that are eligible to be on the plan with the funding that we have for rural rustics. We have a construction project on the plan that needs to move forward. So my recommendation is to approve the plan as is this year and take the time next year to evaluate the four roads that are eligible um, because of their traffic counts and also look at what the funding is remaining from the Route 600 project to kind of look forward um, to see what projects you'd like to add because next year you'll also have smart scale um, applications that will be due which will allow you to apply for other road transportation projects like the one that we just finished at Route 360 and 30 um, and you'll have that list as well so you'll know what's in the queue for the, for the county. Um, for next year. So that's my recommendation. Um, for, before the public hearing, I'd like to remind everyone that this funding is for construction of new facilities. It's not for the um, um, payment for um, us to do maintenance, potholes, snow removal, patches, um, tree trimming, grass cutting. We take care of that um, out of a different fund. So with that, I'll answer any questions you may have before you open it up to the public hearing. Any questions for Ms. McGowan? Yes. One, Mr. Chairman, I know it's your area, but I've got a person I always ask, Sandy Point Road, what year? You didn't really say what year. Oh, in the plan, I believe that's 2023, but I can look that up really it's, quick. It's uh, March 27th, 2024 is the projected date. Kentucky is 2023, 2024. It says March, um, so yes. It's been um, moved back, I think, because I think it was earlier. You don't think? I don't know. I, I think, think it was, was forward, not actually. last year. But anyway. It didn't move since 2018 or 19 when we added it. Um, but keep in mind, um, historically, we've been able to do roads faster. <clears throat> Last year, we had a we didn't have any funding for Hazelwood. We had to wait until we had more funding because we had to do a lot of that environmental work um, on the upper end. But that would kind of slow us down. But once these new roads come through, once we're done with one, we move the money to the next one, and they should go quicker. Um, I expect by next year we'll have done two. Um, and that should help push those back. So, so Sandy Point being the road that goes to the park, um, to the um, outdoor area, you know, we've we got that on our radar to make sure we can get that done quicker. Okay. Can I just make a comment? Sure. Real quick, uh, thank you for, uh, I think Mr. Ron Peak really engaged with it, but uh, safety uh, uh, issues on the Hickson Road, several bad places, some bad accidents up there over the past few years. There were some signs, warning signs put up uh, recently. So I appreciate the response. Took about a year, but got it done. Thank you. Plus, I also want to thank you for your uh, good work on East River Road. Uh, that was certainly more than I expected, the, the repaving there. Yep, that was in the works. It was Next needed. Time. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Yes, I had some judges. Uh -oh. Thank you for the uh, intersection at 360. That turned out really well, better than I expected. And, and also, I, like I wanted, to, you mentioned at the last minute that it's just for new roads. I wondered, didn't you, does the public know? Or sometimes you used to come back and we'd be able to talk to you about that. I know it's not the time now for, for public comment uh, hearings, but can we get you some time to go over? Because a lot of people are complaining about the same old thing trees that hang in the road, lots of potholes. I mean, I've turned them in, I've given them the highway helpline. They just don't seem to get fixed. So. 
Yeah. You can either come back up or you can email me the, the okay. location. Say, I'm not, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Ms. Yeah. McGowan, in all the years I've been doing this, right. has been very responsive to, to <laughs> direct inquiries. You get, a, um, yeah, you get an email at so. 3 a.m., but right. you don't have to respond. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I, I work for VDAT, so I've already got the emails, but then the... <laughs> um, 360, one of the big roads, I guess, you know, 360 from Moncuin, I'm going to say it right, because I live here, I guess I say right. Moncuin <laughs> Creek, all the way to the King and Queen County line, that whole eastbound lane is getting paved this year. Um, so I know a lot of potholes um, and complaints trigger from that, that section. So that, that's being taken care of. All right, I'll let you do your hearing. Okay, thank you. I'll come back thank up when you're done. All right, so we're going to conduct a public hearing on the six-year uh, secondary road improvement plan. Uh, just like with public comments, speakers will have three minutes per individual, five minutes if you're representing a group. If you're representing a group, please state so before you begin speaking, and please state your name and the district in which you reside uh, before you begin. And uh, that's when I will start your time, and I will open the public hearing. Good evening, everybody. Good I'm evening, Charles Pearsall. I'm in the second district. I don't know if this is due with the six year plan, but I won't complain about Route 30. It's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the grooves I've just put in the road. For us to live close to the road, it's annoyance. The truckers come out at four o'clock, and all you hear going down the road is blum, 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 every last time. Just like this evening, well, without my neighbor's house, Bonnie. We couldn't even talk outside because here they come around and they want to run over them strips. That's waste of taxpayers' dollars. When you got drop offs on Route 30, all up and down the road that is tearing farm equipment up, people's tires, if they go off the road, they're going through the woods. Why can't we fix the serious problems? That's just wasting taxpayers' dollars when you could be fixing the back roads, which in King William County is in rough shape. I'm seeing cracks and everything on the roads, there ain't being nothing done. We need to get all secondary roads in decent shape as well. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Pearsaw. Um, yeah, saw the, saw the grooves being cut last week. I thought that might be interesting if somebody who at one point did live right on 30, it's noisy enough. Anyone else? Anyone online asked to speak? Okay, I will close the public hearing. Okay, um, so our, our options tonight are to adopt the six year plan as presented, to amend it, or not to adopt. Not seeing really good reason not to adopt. I'll entertain a motion to do so. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adopt as dated. I'll second. Any discussion? Ms. Branch, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Warren? Aye. Mr. Greenwood? Aye. Mr. Hodges? Aye. Mr. Barber? Aye. 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 Thanks as always, Ms. McGowan. I have one second. Sure. I wanted to, um, I guess, thank everybody for all the years that I've been coming. I've been um, promoted to a new position, so I will no longer be a resident administrator. Um, it's been hard to let everybody know, but um, I'm still going to be available in the maintenance capacity in the district, but you're in good hands with Ron and, and the team here in Saluda, so I'll be here for a little bit longer. But um, So if you send emails or, or contact me, I may have to later, you know, on or whatever. I just figured I'd let you know, so you're going to email me. But still email me okay. um, in case you, you know, I figured you may have heard the news. Right. Um, so anyway, she was going to say that tonight, darn it. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure working with you, and if you need anything in the future, I'll just be up in the district doing some, some maintenance. So anyway, but thank y'all. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Did Ron get a... Uh, did Ron get a promotion? Yeah. Okay, next up, uh, our next public hearing, which is conditional use permit 04 21. 
uh, which is regarding the applicant King William Sand and Gravel Company. Ms. Graham, it's your turn to present. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. So the first one is um, CUP 0421. It's for King William Sand and Gravel. They have a current conditional use permit. Um, this is going to be a modification to add some additional land to extend the life of the uh, gravel pit. They don't plan to open up this area until they close Section 1. So in doing that, there's not going to be an increase of traffic or use of heavy equipment or anything. Um, they've secured any wetlands that are on the site. Um, all of that is going to be secured, so they're not going to be um, affecting that at all. Uh, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to go out and take a look at the site, um, but they've done a, a good job there. They are here tonight to speak and they have a presentation um, to show y'all. Also, no blasting or, or anything at the site. Okay. All right. You said the applicant has a presentation? They do. Right. We'll get that pulled up and um, I'll let them come up with right, that. Let's go ahead okay. and lead with that if they have a presentation and then we'll do the public hearing afterward. Chairman, uh, members of the board. All right, sorry. The floor is yours. Uh, while we wait for the, uh, the presentation to come up, I'm Mark Cronenthal uh, for the applicant, King William Sand and Gravel, um, which is uh, located at uh, Dabney's Rail Road. Um, we have uh, from the applicant, we have uh, Cliff Kirkmeyer uh, and Chris Height here tonight. Um, also, we've got uh, Matt Mouncey on the phone. Um, we also have a number of um, experts who have helped us prepare the application and uh, the previous application, uh, the existing permit. We have the, uh, the founder of James, the James River Institute uh, for Archaeology, uh, Nick Lachetti, is here. Uh, Dr. Mark, Matt, excuse me, Dr. Matt Laird, who you may know, uh, was unable to come. He's got a conflict tonight. Uh, we've got uh, Brett Johnson, who's here, who can uh, answer any engineering or traffic questions. We've also got Badlocks, who can talk about any environmental questions that you may have. Uh, and so what we're planning to do here tonight is I'll offer uh, an overview of the, um, the facts um, by the numbers, um, show some drawings and some maps. And if there are any specific questions you have for the experts, we have them available. And we'd also like to, I, I don't believe we have any opposition, but in the event that we do, I'd like to reserve about a minute uh, for in the, in the event of any rebuttal that's necessary. Right, well, I can go a little bit into the background. Um, as you may know from your file, uh, the original CUP that's in place for the existing operation, even though only within the last few years they've become operational, it was originally approved here by the county in May of 2007. Uh, the regulatory permitting occurred uh, 2007 through 2015. Uh, that's VEDQ, uh, you, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, um, and all of the various Commonwealth entities, including VDOT. Um, phases one, two, and three, as you'll see on a map, are all in the existing CUP, and they've been approved for mining by all of the applicable authorities. Uh, and we've already completed uh, the improvements, um, the road improvements, uh, at the intersection of Route 360 and Dabney's Mill Road. Uh, mining commenced uh, in 2015. Uh, Christine, if I might impose upon you to switch to the next map. Uh, so this shows uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Uh, and th this map uh, is really important um, to help orient uh, sort of um, uh, some of the important principles uh, of, um, of the existing project. If you look on the lower right of the screen, you can see the road 
uh, the, the entrance, and that's where all the trucks that leave the site exit there uh, and go to 360 at Dabney's Mill Road. Uh, but what's, what's really important for you to see, uh, you do see the plant there where you see phase one labeled. Uh, there's a little wasp waste that's right there between phase one and phase two. Uh, what that is a conveyor belt. That's an internal system. So that means there are no trucks uh, for the internal circulation that are going onto any of the roads of the county. Uh, so that means, again, it's very important uh, for the operation uh, that we don't have you know, any of that heavy use uh, getting onto any of the roads. So if we can, um, if we could go to the next slide, please. All right, these are, um, these are uh, again, some of the details. Um, we're, we're proposing to add uh, 100 acres, so it's a little bit more than 100 acres to the existing CUP. Uh, what that will mean uh, is uh, 78 acres of that 100 acres, and you'll be able to see how this, this, um, this works on an upcoming slide, um, will be uh, added to the actual mining operation. Uh, and this is, again, the, the, these, the materials that are mined here, it's, it's surface mining. Uh, it's sand and gravel, uh, and it's used for local and regional infrastructure projects, um, usually to the south and the west. Uh, so this is um, this is indeed uh, a, a local operation. If we go to the next slide, please. Uh, again, so this shows uh, really what is a, a zoom in on phase two. Uh, so you can see existing surface mining there at phase two on the eastern end. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, again, open land that, that's in the existing phase two operation. And then you see two project area labels. Uh, the, the sort of greener area under those project area labels within the orange hatching, uh, that is what's uh, proposed to be added under the CUP. Uh, Ma'am, can I impose upon you for the next slide? All right, this slide really shows why we are asking for this in this phase of the operation. So in the lower right-hand corner, uh, you can see uh, that's, that's sort of that, that aquamarine color uh, is, the, um, is the existing operation. And as it moves to the west, we don't, because we, again, we don't, we're not adding any trucks or operation to the road. The operation just moves together. And the, the, it, you don't have to interrupt the mining. The mining can follow those arrows and avoid the wetlands uh, before you go into phase three. Uh, so this is an operational request. Um, it's a request that uh, candidly eases the operation. It keeps everything internally, uh, and it adds um, no net increase uh, to the traffic um, that'll be leaving the site. Uh, Ma'am, if we go to the next slide, please. So this is the drawing. This is also page 278 of your packet. So this is the drawing that will become part of the case. Uh, and will show the uh, the comprehensive project. Um, I know it's a uh, it, it's a lot of lot of detail here, but in the pink shading, uh, you can see where the phases have been added. Uh, so the way this will work then is that phase two will continue straight into those two sections um, that are in pink, um, likely before they they cross the street uh, to the other operation. If we go to the next slide, please. So again. Uh, some important principles um, that we are, uh, we're not going to increase production rates and we're not going to increase truck trips. Uh, two, uh, we're adding additional reserves only that are in that area that you saw um, with, the, um, with the arrows. Um, everything is uh, processed on site uh, at the plant. Uh, the plant may move, but again, because you've got that internal conveyor belt, uh, you don't have to go onto the um, onto the, uh, the, the, the county and state roads. Uh, and the material will continue to be delivered um, from the existing entrance. So that entrance uh, configuration that you see now and that you've already approved uh, will continue um, to be the, the entrance for the operation. If we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, so it's um, also important we take very seriously, this is an important county. Uh, these, these sites um, you know, have some, some interesting um, interesting archeological resources, historic resources uh, around, um, around them. The existing site uh, has some interesting um, and important um, sites uh, regarding the history of enslaved persons and history of uh, Native Americans. Uh, we can, even though we were not required to, uh, we conducted 
a full uh, phase one archaeological survey of the areas that are for the expansion that you're seeing today. Uh, and so only 20th century sites were located uh, in that very, very detailed survey, the same level of survey that, that discovered uh, historic resources in other parts of the site uh, of, that are not part of, of the uh, addition that we're adding today. Uh, this was voluntary. Um, and the 20th century sites, uh, they are not considered, uh, they're not eligible uh, for the National Register. And so that's, um, that's the threshold uh, for which um, you have to you know, do additional uh, work from the historic uh, perspective. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so this is, um, if you have any questions about the, again, you can, this is uh, important, you can see that we will be avoiding uh, the wetlands areas. Um, it, it just in this kind of mining, you typically don't find the resources that we're looking for under wetlands. Um, so we, we will be avoiding those. If you have any questions for me now, happy to answer or any of the experts. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, questions. Ask for support. Uh, yes, Mark. Uh, when we were, Mr. Garvin, I had the privilege of touring this facility a few weeks ago. Could you illustrate the set aside points for the archaeology finds? That yes, um, let's actually jump ahead. Let's jump ahead. Um, so, uh, sort of anticipating that this may came, come up, let's go another slide. Another slide. Another slide. Another slide. So um, I wonder, uh, Mr. Locchetti, if you would mind uh, coming up. We might need you to show some of these areas, but these these are the set asides. If I might approach the screen here. Um, so here you can see this is where the sort of the lost waste was and the existing operation. Did I just miss that? All right, here we go. All right, that's good. That actually is where we want to be. All right, so you saw that the sites, all the sites that are reserved, are not part of this site. And uh, even though we have the right under the existing programmatic, programmatic agreement uh, that the Native American tribes are parties to, and that the um, uh, also that the Corps of Engineers, we, we do have the right to carefully uh, mine those resources. We are not going to disturb those resources under existing plans. Uh, so those are set aside. This is the project area for this CUP, uh, and this shows where the 20th century sites are. Uh, they, again, they're, they're here in these, um, these red and blue areas. And so you can see the amount of detail where, um, where investigation was done. Everywhere you see one of these white dots uh, is where an investigation was done into the soil uh, to see if there were any other, uh, other sites. And again, that level of investigation is what uh, revealed the, uh, the Native American and enslaved person sites uh, that are preserved um, on the rest of the remainder of the property. So we can go back one slide, maybe I can. Uh, and so, so these sites here with the cross hatching are the sites that are being avoided uh, under the uh, existing agreement. And then with the new site. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, then we're going to go ahead and conduct a public hearing on conditional use permit uh, 04 21. Uh, same as before, speakers, uh, three minutes for an individual, five minutes for a group. Please state if you are representing a group before you begin, and please state your name and the district in which you reside before you begin speaking. Before I open it, can we zoom out real quick? I know I saw a couple people pop into the waiting area. We make sure we have that cleared out and everybody in. Uh, that wants to be in. Okay. Waiting area is empty. Okay, good. All right. Well, then I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. We'll give anybody online an opportunity. If you do wish to speak uh, in regards to public, uh, the public hearing for conditional use permit 04 21, please send a message to. Uh, one of the King William County accounts will get you uh, cued to unmute. I'll do what I normally do there and just give them a 60 second.
Okay, if there is no one to speak, we will close the public hearing. Okay. No public comment, no need for rebuttal. Any more questions from the board before we take action? Okay, I'll entertain a motion in regards to conditional use permit 04 21. Mr. Chair, make a motion we pass the we're in a second. Moved and seconded for approval. Any discussion? Ms. Branch? Aye. 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 Okay, next up is a uh, public hearing for conditional use permit 05-21 applicant James Chester. Ms. Graham. I believe Mr. Chester is going to be joining us um, by Zoom or either on the phone. If he was having trouble with getting there. Where's Chester there? What, uh, what page is that starting on? Uh, 284 of 462, Mr. Garber. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chester are applying for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling. Um, this is going to be located at uh, 3806 uh, Custis Mill Pond Road. Um, they have approximately five acres there. Um, they live there at a single family home and this is going to be a small trailer um, for a family member. And when we get the top one up on this. This will be located on the left side of their house. They've already gotten a health department approval for this, I believe. Um, this was um, approved for recommendation by the planning department um, with the two conditions that it be located behind the primary dwelling um, and it be uh, only occupied by immediate family members. And I was told y'all did not get um, the pack, all the packet information. So I wanted to go ahead and pull this up on PowerPoint to make sure everybody saw the pictures. Sure, pictures are definitely in my packet. Okay. So go ahead. was anybody missing anything out of there? I think, I think some of the stuff that the planning can the planning commission saw in their hearing uh, was not in our packet. Is that right? Yeah. That's what I thought. So this is an aerial um, that you can kind of see um, what the property looks like um, around it, um, and that just shows that it is an AC. Um, and this is a view from the road, um, and you can see the shed. And they're proposing to put this uh, right in front of the shed, pretty much. No. Oh, so they're here. Um, just a little bit closer view. Okay. <laughs> Are we into questions here? Yeah. Well, let's go. Uh, yeah. Typically, hold it till she's gone through her uh, PowerPoint. Um, and the next one. Okay, this is um, a floor plan of the uh, mobile home that they're proposing to put in for their family member. It's 13 by uh, 32. Okay. That was it. How, how is this different from an RV? Well, this is actually, it's going to be a mobile home or a modular. So it's recognized by the building code as a place to live where a, a one of the tiny homes or an RV or another recreational vehicle they're not recognized by the building code so right. these meet the building Mainly, code requirements. most tiny homes if they're built individually is why because they don't have the certification but it's not much different than a tiny home yeah I mean it's a fine and line some of them are, they're well. expensive and they're very nice but they don't meet like the the wall specs the floor specs um, I'm not sure about the electrical. The uh, only other question, the septic system and well will provide adequate. Yes. Okay. And they, with this agreement, they can't change it up and rent it, right? Um, that was one of the conditions that it be um, a family member. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm all right with that. All right. That's all I have, Mr. Um, he's 
make some notes here. Uh, he would like to speak, and he's going to be moving the shed to the other side of the property. I watched the uh, planning commission hearing and uh, I think they covered all the bases. Anyone else? All right, we have the applicant on the line. Is there anything they wish to add before we move to public hearing? Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon all. I apologize for not being there in person. Um, I'd like to thank for the opportunity. Um, also, the shed will be moved but to the left, if you see the picture where the shed is, the, 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 the small dwelling in question would be off to the left behind the wooded area and not quite visible from the road. Thank you for that. Anybody have any questions for the applicant? Okay. All right, uh, then we'll go ahead and move to conduct uh, the public hearing on conditional use permit 05 uh, dash 21. Uh, as before, individuals, three minutes, five minutes of your representative group. Please state that you're representing the group before you begin speaking, uh, and please state your name and the district in which you reside before you begin. We'll open the public hearing. If you are uh, online, please send a message to one of the King William County accounts. We'll get you unmuted. If you're in the building, just come on up. And I'm doing the 60 second count for anybody online that might have some trouble. Okay, hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Gentlemen, if there's no other questions, I'll entertain a motion in regards to conditional use permit 05-21. All motion to approve. Second. Move to approve and second. Any discussion? Ms. Branch, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Hyland. Aye. Mr. Barber. Aye. Mr. Warren. Aye. Mr. Greenwood. Aye. 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 Next up, we have conditional use permit 06-21, applicant being Chris Kwan. Mr. Graham. Okay. Uh, Mr. Guam is supposed to be uh, with <laughs> okay. <laughs> here in person. Okay. The two of y'all got here quicker than the internet, right? <laughs> All right. And he is also applying for conditional use permit um, to construct an accessory dwelling um, on his property at 1053 West Chinkapin Road. Um, he has approximately 10.2 acres. Um, and there's currently a single family home and a detached garage on the property. Um, I also have some pictures um, for this property. Here's an aerial um, as you can kind of see what's surrounding the property and it is fairly wooded. I believe the person to the left can see just a little bit through the wood. Okay. Yes. I'm going to show that it's all um, AC in that area. Okay. Um, and this is, um, this is your house that you're redoing. And they're in the middle of uh, doing a renovation of this existing house. Okay. Um, that just shows one side of the property. Uh, and the other side. Um, and let's see, posted the sign out there. Okay. 
Um, and this is a plat. It's hard to tell um, what the proposed accessory um, dwelling is supposed to be to the right um, front. Okay. What is the square footage of the proposed accessory dwelling? I know it's in here. This well, is a pretty big packet. <laughs> yeah, the Planning Commission recommended approval um, with three conditions. Uh, that there be only two dwellings on the property, it be about, uh, occupied by immediate family only, and then it be no more than two bedrooms and a maximum of 1,200 square feet. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Grant? Any questions for the app? I've been trying to find out where is Chinka Penn Road? Taking the first part. Okay. Ah. Okay. Where that is. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the public hearing for conditional use permit 06-21. Uh, I think everybody knows the drill by now, but you get out of line and I'll drop a gavel on you. <laughs> we'll open the public hearing. I will remind any of those online, anybody that wishes to speak, send a message to one of the King William County accounts. We'll get you unmuted. Uh, anybody in the building, come on up. And uh, as usual, I will do a 60 second countdown for anybody online, just in case anybody needs a second to find their chat button. Ms. Branch, I don't see anybody in the chat. Is that correct? All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and close the public hearing. All right, we have before us conditional use permit 06-21. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve conditional use permit 06-21. I'll second. Moved and seconded for approval. Any discussion? Ms. Branch, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Very good. Okay, now we come to conditional use permit 07-21. This one, the applicant is Coastal Farm Service. Ms. Grant. Okay. Thanks. Um, this is for conditional use permit. Um, and Mr. Crabb is also um, in the audience to speak to y'all as well. Um, to operate an agricultural commodity production, he's um, installing a 3,500 uh, grass airstrip um, to operate his aerial application service. Um, this is at 173 Landing Road, about 127 acres, and it's zoned AC. Um, he would like uh, to be able to have up to five aircraft from this strip and operate from dawn to dusk when in season and follow standard aviation patterns and uh, take off and land from the north unless very strong winds are present. Um, we did put in front of you, we had some concerns. Uh, I tried to address some of them, and I asked Mr. Crabb to answer some of the questions that the individual um, had in his email. Um, so he's supposed to do that when he comes All up. Right. Um, planning did approve uh, recommending uh, this uh, with the seven conditions um, that are listed, um, that he be limited to five spray planes, one helicopter, and one private plane. Uh, site plan be submitted and approved before development obtain all required approvals and permits. Uh, vegetative buffer be provided between all adjacent property owners. Only operate from dawn to dusk with the exception of an emergency. Follow its standard aviation patterns from the north and the CUP will become null and void should the business cease for more than two years. Okay. That's on you. All right. Uh, you said we had the applicant with us? Yeah, um, 
Mr. Questions for Ms. Graham or for the applicant before we open the public hearing? Can I make a motion to table this? Or Not before the public hearing. Okay. <laughs> um, Mr. Crabb, would you mind coming up and answering some of the questions that we talked about earlier? Good evening. How are you all this evening? Doing well, Good. Uh, some questions Sherry sent over to me. Uh, I can make comments here. Is that dealing with the runoff and that kind of stuff in your water? Yes, um, that was one of them. Yeah. Uh, we don't have runoff. We have containment, full containment on all all of our sites. We. Uh, have shuttles, we, kept, we capture everything. Uh, we do have any type of spill whatsoever. And like I said, we do have containment pads, all concrete, and they'll hold it and we can get it back up. I've been in business for 20 years. I haven't had a spill. We're very conscientious about what we do in our business. These are agricultural chemicals. These are the same products that every King William Balmer uses. That's who we work for. That's all we're doing. I also work for the uh, state, fight fire, uh, forest fires. I work the whole state of Virginia with that. Normally I have a contract with them 10 days out of the year, or I'm on call as needed. I have that relationship with most of the foresters. If they have a situation, they will call me. And I have no, if I'm not busy doing other things, I have no problems uh, fighting them. Some of the other questions were, of course, taken off to the north. As the land sees right there, um, I have a farm building that is kind of where those two open fields are. As you can see, that's cut over ground. I will be taking off to the north in most cases. That's just the easiest way for us to work. Uh, and we'll land from the north coming back in. When we're, in this, when we're running in season, it's all about time. And we're trying to shape as much time as we can to get as many loads in a day as we can to service as many farmers as we can. Uh, one of the questions, of course, was what products are to be dispersed from the aircraft? And again, I stated a moment ago that that's going to be agricultural products, fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, uh, same thing every King William farmer uses currently. So that's who we're working for again. And what's in season? That was the other question. Uh, again, I start can start fighting fires in February, and most of the time, I don't fight them out of the home base. Uh, they'll call me and they'll dispatch me to somewhere else in the state. I just fought this year in Suffolk. I uh, worked out of Suffolk Airport quite a bit. Uh, but that will be, like I said, February, March through April, depending on how wet, dry, whatever the case may be. Agricultural season normally starts up from April and will run till in the cover crop into the fall. Uh, most of the time we're finished by late October. And then we do maintenance. Airplanes are down, so we don't do much flying in the wintertime. I think one of the questions that, that I saw, and I saw your answer to, but just for public edification about storage of those chemicals on yes, the property. Yes, that was on the part of it. We don't, I'm not a retailer. I'm an applicator. Growers bring me their products. I disperse it on their fields to protect their crops. When we're done, there shouldn't be anything left over. And if it is, they come back and pick it up. We do not store chemical. We're not, again, a retailer. So we don't have, we're not like your Southern States, your nutrients, places like that. They're the ones delivering to me. So that was part of the question that I had. I know that uh, Mr. Sankey uh, asked that particular question. So you're saying that Nutrigen Southern States actually bring their product to you, yes, sir. not the physical farmer? Well, what they do the way that question was answered, it kind of sounded like the farmer was physically bringing the material They do both. You. They do both. It comes from either Southern States or so, so if, one of those. If, you, if Nutrien or Southern States bring the product to you, do they bring it there 
for every load that you fly out? No, or, sir. Or, so you do have a storage area now? Well, it stays outside. I mean, we mix normally. Yeah. If I, they'll bring our pallet to me, it'll sit there in cases, shovels. That's it. What is your affiliation with uh, Crab Aviation LLC? I'm a manager. So you, you are not, is that a family operation? Or no, sir. Is that, is, I sold that operation. So it's still called Crab Aviation? It's still called Crab Aviation. Yes, sir. And you immediately, you sold that and immediately purchased property to install, which has already been approved for private airstrip. That's correct. Uh, probably in a straight line, maybe a mile, mile and two, a half. Two and a half. By the way the crow flies. By the way the crow flies. Yes, sir. So th that's a problem that I have. You, you physically sold a property that had a conditional use permit. Mm-hmm and you purchased this with every intention of moving your operation there um, I, i'm the supervisor of the fourth district so that's why i'm asking you yeah, these no, questions. I understand. and i am concerned your planes i live on infield road mm -hmm. i'm very familiar with your uh, yellow aircraft anyway. mm -hmm. so at this point in time do you fly a helicopter mm -hmm. yes sir you know i haven't seen that yet yep. so you're flying that still out of the uh, what is it? Access to that woodland? Woodland. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You're making all your flights out of woodland. Yes, sir. Right so when you leave, what is the purpose of that airstrip? This what airstrip is, is well, let's say I'm fertilizing two and a half miles closer, makes a difference. I just want the ability. I own this one. Me personally, I own the strip that I'm trying to get this permit for. So what will they be doing at that airstrip? Is this an expansion of your business? No, they won't. They won't. If I'm flying there and pulling out of that, they won't be pulling out of that strip. Does that make sense? They will not be pulling a load from there. Only reason I would have this one, well, I've sold it. I, you don't ever know what will ever happen. I want the ability. I own that land. I want the ability to use the land the way I want to use it for my, my use from my business or from what my personal use, whatever the case may be. So, you know, I don't know this either. So the current owners, I think the tax bill is going to Tennessee. Is that That's correct. correct? That is correct. Okay. So the current owners, once you move, there's still, I haven't had this question answered. Uh, maybe you did and I didn't understand it. What will they be doing once you move your business with this particular airstrip that that you are using right now off of uh, Woodland, what will the purpose of that airstrip be since if, you're the manager? If I don't stay with that company and I move, I can't answer that question, okay? I, I'm not going to even speculate on that. Like I said, the reason why I'm doing this is to incorporate this strip and using both of them so I can get closer. We do a lot of cover crop. We do a lot of fertilizing. When we do that, we're hauling a lot of loads, heavy loads, and we're landing a lot. The closer we get, the faster we can turn this stuff out. And that's what I try to do. I move to a lot of strips. I work off of dirt roads, cow pastures. I work off of anything that will get me closer to the job so I can execute it in a faster fashion. So so what is your service area from either, either one of these two strips? How far do you fly? I work from West Virginia to North Carolina. You fly out of uh, I will pull I, in the mornings I'll come I live uh, in Hanover at the time we're thinking about putting a house up there at, the, at this place but at this moment I'll pull out of wherever I'm coming from uh, let's say I'm home I'll leave there and go to wherever I need to go Chesapeake uh, Harrisonburg wherever the case may be but you're not you're not launching with a load of chemicals you're probably maximum not every time. fuel at that. Not every time. That's correct. You like land, in, like you, tomorrow, I'm going to Abington. You land and upload your chemicals and do your thing. That's correct. Okay. I'll so leave. Do you have other airstrips? Oh, yes, sir. That's what I thought. Yes, sir. We have several. It, it's a minor safety issue with the hang gliding operation by the golf course. How do you intend to mitigate? Uh, is, we've been working talk together. To each other about uh, We've been working together for operating. years. Yep. I've known him for years. We've worked, always worked together. I fly around this area. I mean, well, I see you yep. in my house all the time. All the time. Yes, sir. I'm uh, ex-Air Force, so I love it. <laughs> King Williams, uh, I, I, 
I handle quite a, a lot of farmers in King William, so I'm, I'm around there all the time. I know the hand glider operations. I've known Steve so long, I know basically when he's operating, when he's not operating. So we give wide berth, and plus you can see them very well. They're better than parachute operations. Did you say you do fire suppression also? Yes, sir. Which size plane is that? Uh, 500 gallons. I mean, what, can you define what that means? <laughs> Yeah, it's a 500 gallon. It carries 500 gallons of product. But I can size drop. size plane related? Can you relate to something like that? Um, wow, I can tell you. Is that the reason your strip is so long? Yes, sir. Carrying heavy loads, you got to you got to have a longer strip to get that. Right. Especially when it's hot. You know, heat makes a big difference. Right. Uh, I don't know how to tell you a size a King Air. You know what a King Air is? A what? A, a King Air? Yeah. It's, it's equivalent to a King Air, okay. except it's a single engine with a larger engine on it. Okay. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. A good size brush fire, perhaps, is an analogy. A good size brush fire, you could disperse chemicals. And is, we, is that what you're asking, Bill? Is, is, no, really. Is it just compare the size of the airplane to maybe a, one that. Okay. Yeah, I was really wondering. He said um, he wouldn't take off at night except for emergencies. What first caught me in is like, you don't spray crops at night. <laughs> Not around here. No. <laughs> so that's why I was wondering. I thought I heard fire suppression. That's all. Yeah. Uh, Any other questions for the applicant? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and conduct the public hearing. Uh, if there's any follow up after that, we'll bring it back up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So we'll open the public hearing for this one. Uh, reminder three minutes for an individual, five minutes if you are representing a group. If you are representing a group, please state so before you begin speaking and please state your name and the district in which you reside before you begin. I'll open the public comment, or public hearing rather. Uh, anybody in the building, please come on up and approach the lectern. We'll give you your time. Anybody online, please message either one of the King William County accounts. We'll get you in the queue to speak. Go ahead and give that a bit of time. Thirty more seconds. Anybody online, please message the King William County account. Ms. Branch, I don't see anybody in the queue. Very good. All right, I will go ahead and close the public hearing. All right, gentlemen, we have uh, conditional use permit 07-21 in front of us. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion 721. That be a motion to accept approve. Okay. Yeah, approve. I would like the motion to table it. Well, we have a preceding motion to adopt okay. or to approve. Sorry. I'll wait for a second for that. Going once, going twice. Need a second. Which one the only commission to to approve a good second? I'll say. Okay. <laughs> so we can get a vote. I mean, it can't do anything without a second. So. Uh, this is true. Okay. Uh, so the motion's been made and seconded. Now we go to discussion. Which would be your time, Mr. Carr? Well, Mr. Chair, we just discussed this, I think, in the planning that we wanted to promote agriculture. And this gentleman does, you know, support that. Well, my problem with it is. He had an existing an existing uh, application for it, Astra, two years ago, and he did state that he sold it. So we've gone from one that he sold to another one, and now it's two. So the Astra that you are using right now off of Woodland, how long is that? Is that 3,500 feet long also? The answer was yes. Yes. So I imagine you sold it for a profit, and this okay. is this is where we are. Stuart, could I ask you, what does it matter? 
I mean, that's personal property. Well, sure. Uh, well, no, it, it's just it's just if, that if it's, you want, yeah, just come up to the mic so that the people that are on the Zoom can hear you. I don't want you to get hung up on one strip. I use many strips. I understand. I just own this one. All I'm asking is to let me use my land the way I want to use my land. I'm not asking to do anything else. I land on Mr. Woods, uh, Colin Woods strip. I land, uh, golly day, Todd's Berry strip. I mean, like I said, I'll land on cow pastures, dirt roads. I'll go anywhere. And it's legal for me to do that. I understand. I, I, don't, my, I, don't, my, I, don't, I don't have a problem with, with, with your business at all. My problem is, well, one thing, both of these are in the fourth district, and you physically sold the other one, and this is pretty much another identical strip. And this is where we are. So, I mean, we can vote on it. I, I'm just not in favor. Oh, that's fine. Mm. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Ms. Branch, call the roll, please. Thank you, Mom. Aye. Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Harvey? No. Aye. Permit is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> One more conditional use permits, <laughs> but two more public hearings. Conditional use permit 08 21. The applicant is Joshua Stewart. Ms. Graham, you have the floor. I'm okay. <laughs> Kept y'all busy tonight with these. I apologize. <laughs> We don't usually have this many all at one time. Um, Mr. Stewart is here today. Um, he's also applying for a conditional use permit uh, to construct a 27 by 28 attached accessory dwelling. Um, but I do have some pictures on this one also. Um, the, his dwelling is located at 95 at Port Road. Um, he's got approximately 10 acres, uh, which is mostly cleared and he has um, an additional 10 acres adjacent to this parcel that he owns. Um, this is an older home that was constructed in 1920 um, and is owned AC as well as a lot of the property around um, this. And this is also for a family member. So all of the um, accessory dwellings tonight have been for a family member um, that they can help to take care of. We have the applicant uh, here as well. He's here. Okay, good. So, and this follow. That's where approximately the addition is going to go. I tried to highlight it for to make it a little easier to see. Is that detached? It's attached. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's the aerial, so you see it's um, not anything very close to them. Okay. And all AC in that area. Um, and this is uh, his house, and back there is where the addition should be coming off of. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Off the rear side. It's off the rear, right where that that gray chimney is the back side of the house. We'll come straight back to that. Okay. That's kind of a side view of the back. Excuse me, if you could go back to the previous. I've read this package about five times. I'm trying to, and I, I know where Mr. Uh, Crabtree lives. Where, perhaps if you, could, if you could come up and point to where this is all taking place. If you could go back maybe to the beginning, I believe that was a, a picture. You want to go back to the zoning map with that? You no, know, to the picture that showed the plot, the uh, oh, okay. big view. I think. Thank you for inviting me up. Um, I think I can give you a quick answer. Um, Mr. Crabtree is my father-in-law. Okay. And that's his old place. 
Yeah. So they have they have separated off a, a small plot and have moved just behind us. So we get to see yeah, them every day. That yeah the yeah I think you, forward two is where they were trying to. Be. So you're modifying that. Uh, yeah. Um, what was the question? Could you point that, sure. that house there, right off of Epworth, is what you're going to add to? This is the, oh, okay. the, the four crab tree farm on there. Okay. Um, my wife and my family and I live there now, and we're seeking to build a small attached gotcha. house for Th mine thank on you. the back, on the back. Part. It was so much information, and I, I, I knew Mr. Crabtree, and sure. I've been there before, but I couldn't put it all together. Thank you. Any questions from Ms. Grammer for the applicant? Okay, we'll go ahead and conduct our public hearing. All right, individuals, three minutes. Those representing a group five, state your name and the district before you begin. All right, 30 more seconds. Again, if you're online, please message one of the King William County accounts. We'll get you in the queue to get unmuted and speak. If you're in the building, come on up. Okay, we will close the public hearing. All right, gentlemen, we have conditional use permit 08-21. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Motion to approve. <laughs> second. <laughs> Took the second away, too. Any discussion? Or is it a second? He or tried it? to, but Ms. Branch. Too fast. Aye. 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 Okay, last public hearing of the night. This is consideration of Ordinance 06 21, which would replace King William County Code Chapter 70, Article 8 meals tax with an ordinance for a food and beverage tax that conforms with state code. Ms. Bunkhauser is with us to discuss this. Good evening. Good evening. Good. You so, have the floor. So I have the floor the, um, the meal, the food and beverage ordinance that's been advertised on the agenda and on the county website is the same from the previous one, except the definition of beverage has been changed to the same as the first meals tax ordinance of the county to read. Beverage means alcoholic beverage defined as in 4.1-100 and non-alcoholic beverages served as part of a meal. Okay. And as, as I said at the previous um, public hearing of, concerning this, this ordinance, our old ordinance, was a meals tax ordinance copied from the town. State code has different rules for counties and cities and towns. Cities and towns have a meals tax. Counties have a food and beverage tax. Rather than go and amend each section of the previous ordinance or the current ordinance, changing meals tax to food and beverage, this ordinance would replace that with the correct terminology. Okay. So I know this has been kicked around a bit um, over the last month. Questions from Ms. Funkhauser before we begin the hearing. Uh, Mr. Moore, I know you had some as recently as this morning regarding some input you had gotten. Uh, throughout the day, it's been clarified and um, Actually, a conversation with Ms. Funkhauser early this morning, but midday, I'm satisfied with what we have. Okay. Are you satisfied with what we got or what this is proposing? What we're, what we're proposing. Okay. Is. 
No, I'm not satisfied with what we've got. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, conduct a public hearing on Ordinance 06 21. Individuals, three minutes. Five minutes if you're representing a group. Please state your name and your district. Hello, Chris Couch, District 5. I am representing a group uh, as a food manufacturer in the business. Uh, this impacts me. I'm not satisfied with what we have or what's being proposed. Um, I first would like to, to uh, commend Mrs. Funk Hauser for her support and taking the time to understand the matters relates to my King William County based agribusiness and the product that I manufacture and offer for sale. She's been a refreshing pleasure to work with, and I look forward to the improvements she continues to make that will benefit the county and its tax paying citizens. Now, regarding this ordinance, as I understand it, this rewritten ordinance, completely new, uh, was not Mr. Mrs. Bonkhauser's uh, request. It was initiated by Mr. McRoberts, who gave that approval. I'm not sure. Uh, whatever the answer and why it, this hasn't been brought up over the last two years is uh, surprising to me. Uh, but we have before us an ordinance that has been updated from the one that we looked at last month, only because of the error that I found and presented. And it is correct. Um, Mr. McRoberts' original draft included a definition of beverage that it was not only a change in scope, it was different from the definition provided in the state statute authorizing counties to have a food and beverage tax to begin with. It was not really hard to miss. The state code is really only a page and a half of text. And they've spent almost two years looking at this, accumulating over $45,000 in legal fees reviewing this for the county. The adoption of an ordinance is a formal process, one that is voted on by the elected officials responsible for setting policy only after a public announcement and hearing, I fail to understand why that ordinance, specifically a tax ordinance, cannot contain a definition for a key scope item. The Sands Anderson interpretation, as described to me, due to the Dillon rule, King William cannot define a word or phrase, for example, prepackaged single salad serving, or single serving salad, in the King William ordinance says this is not explicitly defined at the state level. If that's the case, then one, why did the first draft include a definition of beverage that was different from that in the state code? Two, where did the definition of food on line 23 come from? Because that definition does not exist in the state code. It is a new definition. So we're adding definitions now, but we're also saying we can't have a definition. Rather than define an existing term that is proven to be contentious, our advice from our legal counsel, as explained to me, is that scope items can be interpreted and defined outside of the ordinance by one person without knowledge, training, or experience in food and beverage serving sizes. The definition of scope is arbitrary, defined without review, public comment, or vote, and allowed to be changed at any time without any justification required. Does this seem to be the right interpretation of the way state tax laws are meant to be? This passes the gut check for this Board of Supervisors? It is so often it's said that the Board of Supervisors is responsible for setting policy, and the Commissioner of Revenue is responsible for administration. From where I come from, definition of scope is policy, not administration. Thus far, no one I have reviewed this with has confirmed this interpretation. That includes two state delegates, legislative directors, legislative directors that have reviewed this with state attorneys, college professors. State attorneys that review this disagree with this interpretation. They highlighted that counties across the Commonwealth all have ordinances with specific definitions. Look at our ordinances. There are many terms that are defined throughout our own ordinances. Even in this proposal before you, the definition of food does not exist in the state, state tax code. In closing, I kindly requested uh, on the record and prior to your vote on this, uh, that Mr. McRoberts put on the record his legal justification provided to the elected officials of King William County that support this Dillon rule interpretation that nobody else seems to agree with. Uh, the, the term prepackaged single salad serving, single serving salad, or any other term for that matter, um, proposed in this ordinance, proposed in the King William County Ordinance, cannot be defined in the King William County Ordinance. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Do we have anybody in the queue online? And I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, Ms. Funkhauser, I feel like you have a word to share with us. I do not disagree with everything that Mr. Couch said, but 
And that has been the consistent counsel from Mr. McRoberts. I tried very, very hard to get exemptions or change the current ordinance to get him out of the situation with the meals tax and ways around it and always came back to it is against the Dillon rule. I even suggested Mr. Roberts, what if we propose it to the board and they voted for it? And he said, then I would have to resign. He's very adamant that this is against the Dillon rule. And I am not an attorney and I'm not gonna recommend the board go against attorney's advice. You know. It's questionable, but Mr. Couch's situation has been on the fringe between taxable, not taxable. It's a difficult situation, and I wouldn't, I can't recommend that the county go against council. Mr. Chair, what would be the ramification of tabling this until further investigation? None that I'm aware of for now. Um, always an option it's just more expense legal expense what would be the purpose of it we haven't been able to find out anything i, I thought we had sort of got it settled at the last meeting yeah. well these for the the two issues one one that has been uh you know corrected to mm -hmm. to the satisfaction of the stakeholders and one that is not mm -hmm. um and so the purpose, Mr. Greenwood, would be to um, basically have further discussion with our council and, and seek other input as well, um, which I uh, guess Mr. Couch certainly has. Uh, Ms. Funkhauser, have you had any conversations with anybody who has a differing opinion? Or? Um, I have not done all the research Mr. Couch has done. I have compared this ordinance with Henrico ordinance. Mm -hmm. And it is very similar. Our ordinance is simple, and a lot is left to the interpretation of the Commissioner of Revenue Office. And the state seems to like that, to have the Commissioner of Revenue be the decider in assessment issues. So you know, the more specific you make an ordinance, you know, the more avenues that there can be controversy. You know, like, or I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Yeah. Um, it, it, certainly there's there's benefits yeah. and reasons that you would yeah. want flexibility yeah. and, and, and reasons yeah. that you would yeah. not. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't see the state granting, you know, counties to definitely allowing them to define serving sizes. That is just too onerous. So serving size of soft serve ice cream, an ice cream sandwich, a scoop of ice cream, you know, you know, bag of potato chips, you know, it would be like very much for them to get into. But defining, you know, different businesses, I, I don't know. But if they're defined at the federal level, just not the state or county level. Yeah. We're prevented yeah. from using the federal rules because. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's what I proposed to Mr. You know, McRoberts. Can we align our ordinance with the state sales tax for food that is has a lower food tax rate because it's for home consumption? And he said no. I mean, everything I tried to propose, he said no. It's against the Dillon rule. I mean, you can always find another attorney to give you the answer you want. I mean, so it's just, you know, you know you're not gonna please everybody with an ordinance. Well, we're, we're certainly aware of that. Yeah. Um, I, I think what we're, what we're seeking is the ability to be clear. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And I don't think it's a, it's a matter of whether or not we think that that interpretation mm, yeah. is, is correct, or at yeah. least as far as the, yeah. into that yeah. clause that we're debating whether or not we yeah. would add it or not, whether yeah. or not we, the desire yeah. is to add it, yeah. the, the, the question is the ability to add yeah. it, right? Um, it, it, so that, that leads us back to... Yeah. Uh, Do we have the ability to seek a second, second opinion? Do we have a legal avenue? 
Where's Andrew at tonight, anyway? He's got a trial. Yes, he's in trial prep, so do we, uh, we, we don't have him on tonight. Yeah. Right. It's always the same thing. Yeah. And like I said, it was when Sally was here, it was always up to her. So it's, it's up to the Commissioner of Revenue. It should be up to the Commissioner of Revenue now. She has a different opinion than what the previous one did. We should go with what she says now. I mean, all this back and forth, that, that same thing as the rest of the citizens. We've wasted too much money on this already, and I don't want to spend any more money on it. Like you said, you can talk to anybody. It's just like consultants. You can get any answer for anything you want, for any outcome you want, depending on which consultant firm and which lawyer you go to, how much you pay them. I hate them all. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you say what you mean? All right. Um, I mean, I did so. send you a copy of State Code 58.1-3. 3833 for the county food and beverage and in the like section a it lists all the things that aren't taxable and in our ordinance 70-328 it lists the same things and that's what mr um Morin contacted me today if we could add something to exclude agribusinesses or food manufacturers i you know i've asked mr roberts about that and he said it goes against the dillon rule yeah, and he paid for a lot, a lot for his legal advice. So it'd be a shame not to take it. And it's a, it's a simple ordinance that really just follows the state code. I mean, you have other ordinances to find grocery ordin, you know, grocery items. Yeah. So there are things that are defined in our ordinance that aren't in the state code. There's things in other ordinances that defined our own state code. I. So you're saying that we have to follow the Dillon rule to be in alignment with the state code, period. So what you're saying well, yeah. in so the, many words. The Dillon rule says that we have to comply. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. So the Dillon rule is the locality can only do what the state says exactly. it can do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Greenwood. You would seem to want to approve this. You would seem to want to table it. Somebody make a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to table this proposed uh, ordinance until uh, further research is conducted. Motion to table. Going once, going twice. Motion fails. Motion that we pass this ordinance. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion seconded. Discussion. We've spent enough money. Bring right. another attorney into it, it'll start all over again. <laughs> Perfect being the enemy of the good in this case, I suppose. <laughs> Mr. Morin, anything to add? Four of you, one of me. Anyone else? Okay, motion seconded. Can we get a roll call, please? Mr. Hodgkin. Aye. Mr. Parker. Aye. Mr. Morin. Backing my constituent, nay. Aye. Nay. Carries. All right. So that does it for business, unless Mr. Uh, Hudgens has anything administrative to add. All right, we do have a closed meeting tonight, so we'll do board comments. We'll start with Mr. Hudgens. Right, I really do not have a whole lot at this time. Uh, it's nice having the mask removed, I, like everybody, but I just hope it didn't backfire on us on the other side of that. But, we do appreciate everybody coming out, and uh, and we really appreciate the ones that came back online. <laughs> they got bumped, but uh, again, uh, we always appreciate the public and the comments, and we do listen to every one of you. Uh, may not can't agree with every one of you, but we do listen. Thank you, Mr. Greenwood. Mm -hmm. Did uh, Mr. Hodges' remarks, and I also wanted to. 
thank uh, Chairman Muskowski for rec recognizing Mr. Schools. He was in my district. He was my predecessor. He actually helped me a lot to get this position, even though I took it away from him in an election. But I have very much respect for him and sorry to he see him go so soon. And thanks, everybody, for coming. And have a good Memorial Day, because that's coming up the holiday. Be careful out there with the mask mandate gone. I'm just, I don't want to even think what could happen. <laughs> Mr. Moore? I had a constituent uh, contact me about the, the FIPSA uh, stations, particularly Central Garage and Epworth. I'd like to um, work with the county administrator to better define what the FIPSA, I think it's the operating rules we need to see, not the contract, uh, reading it. Uh, stipulations, restrictions on number of tires, oil, hazardous materials, recycling. It, it seems like we might, they they have been changing things. I might be wrong, but I'd like to get with you and, and work out and perhaps uh, present or discuss further at the next work session. Sure. Uh, just public comment. We've got a lot of money coming down through the American Rescue Act. Uh, it's going to be available for broadband expansion a lot of activity. Uh, we're going to try very hard to take advantage where we can with uh, existing providers and anticipated providers, that being Atlantic Broadband and All Points Broadband and anybody else that wants to participate. So we're, we're kind of excited as to where this may lead us here in the coming months for expanding. Mr. Gar. <clears throat> Thank everybody that came out. It's a pretty good turnout tonight. Also, uh, Everybody have a healthy and safe uh, Memorial Day. And everybody remember what it's truly about. The fallen uh, veterans that gave everything for everything that we have. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, my father was a World War II veteran. My grandfather was a World War I veteran. And I always pause and give thanks. Thank you. Thank you for that point, Mr. Garber. Um, uh, apologies to those that were on, um, you know, joining us online tonight, and then those that were forced to join us rather in person. Uh, I didn't hear a lot of what was being said there, but it didn't sound pleasant. So, apologize, y'all had to uh, endure that. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom of that, and um, uh, you know, th this technology. I know we're not the only one having these problems, but we need to prevent them when we can. Um, and thanks for sticking with us. Uh, thanks, Miss Walker. I saw shot down the road and joined us in person. This looked at the applicant from uh, from earlier. Um, you know, we're all we're all navigating all the same things, trying to figure this all out. So um, thanks to uh, everyone who came tonight. Uh, thanks to Ms. Graham, especially for having all of that so well put together and ready for us to, to get these applicants uh, processed and get them on their way to uh, getting their projects done. Uh, as everybody has said, please have a safe and happy Memorial Day. Uh, and we will plan to see you all back here uh, in a couple weeks time. And if there is nothing else, Want the motion? I think Mr. Yeah. Warren has it. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with Section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia, I move that the Board of Supervisors convene and close meeting for the appointment of individuals to boards and commissions, as well as interview of a prospective candidate for employment, uh, specifically the county administrator position, as well as in accordance with Section 2.2-3711A5 of the Code of Virginia, I move that the Board of Supervisors convene a closed meeting for the proposed expansion of an existing industry in King William County. Sir, I should have made and second in any discussion. Ms. Branch. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 In closed session, we'll be back in a bit. Uh. All right, can I get a motion to call the meeting back into open session? I'll motion to call the meeting back into open session. Second. Move and seconded. Get the roll call, please. Aye. 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 We are back in open session. I voted aye for the record. Everybody else just didn't do that. All right. Uh, and then we need SR1. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve SR1. Second. Move and seconded. Any discussion? Ms. Branch? Aye. 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 SR1 is approved. Mr. Chairman, 
I make a motion that we adjourn. Yeah, right, right, right. We've got one thing we've got to do. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, That's yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I back, no, right. okay. I, I back that one down. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't here. Yeah. Right? I just had it. No, it's like a package. Page two. Right, but I had it literally in my aha, just like it worked. Okay, um, we have resolution 21 32, whereas Janie L. Rhodes' term on the Planning Commission expires as of June 30th, 2021, and whereas the Board of Supervisors now desires to make an appointment or reappointment to this position. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors of King William County that Mr. Matthew Sluter be appointed or uh, be appointed to the aforementioned organization for a term ending June 30th, 2025. And I'll entertain a motion to adopt that resolution. Also moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Ms. Branch. Aye. 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 Now. Now I'll make that motion. Very good. Motion addition. to adjourn. Second. Motion. Yeah, we adjourn. Seconded. Ms. Yeah. Branch, can you call the roll, please? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Oh, okay. Aye. Well, these meetings get longer. Yes. Yes. Oh, what are these little things? A little fob?